Uh, hi, this is Vitek here. Um, this is an update to my previous video, uh, uh, Six Coiler, according to um, uh, John Bedini. Um, it was working pretty well. I made some adjustments and uh, I decided to uh, put this in kind of like a setup which will prevent from, from any damage. Um, that's the same setup which I had in a previous um, a video. It's a six filer, um, uh, six strands of uh, 100 uh, feet of uh, AVG uh, 18. Um, it's an air core, uh, except um, uh, it's got a small uh, ferrite uh, uh, bead inside. It's just an experiment. And um, I have uh, a five NJL. 21194 uh, transistors on this heatsink and uh, I'll show this better and there is a bridge rectifier on this uh, uh, golden uh, heatsink and what I did I added a switch so I have a three settings and I can adjust the environment of, uh, of the transistors um, which will allow me to uh, uh, charge the smaller uh, batteries uh, without uh, uh, boiling them too much because uh, if I have a, a full um, a full power uh, the small batteries such as uh, 7 or 10 ampere hour will, uh, will just boil uh, very rapidly um, this is this is the uh, configuration the circuit according to John Bedini. Um, I use inverted uh, trigger where the trigger wire is connected to the uh, the, the positive instead of uh, negative, and uh, the charge is much better. And I added two uh, two meters here. One is on the input, um, which will uh, allow me to uh, control uh, total input um, current which is very uh, very good indicator if you work with uh, with the battery you're trying uh, to restore um, the the input current will will show you um, if if there is a short because um, it will it will go much higher and uh, also you might see uh, when the battery is getting restored and um, changing um, impedance uh, the, the the current will, will will drop, so it's just a just a good thing to have. And um, uh, that's the output. Uh, I don't like the idea of having anything connected permanently to the output, uh, which might interfere uh, with the with the charging. Uh, so what I did, I added the switch, so I can uh, monitor my um, voltage across the charge battery. Um, but not uh, it's not permanently hooked up right now it's at uh, 1544 uh, volts and I'm working on uh, on this battery right now she's um, uh, she's working she's working pretty well um, except uh, there is a one cell, this one in the middle, which you can see it's it's been quiet. Like when I start with this battery, uh, was only one cell responding, and gradually all these three they start responding. The the electrolyte uh, was turning uh, a brownish, which was the sign of the of the sulfation being knocked off the. A place right now it's settled in the bottom, uh, so the electrolyte is much clearer. Um, but this one cell, it's uh, it's still uh, not not responding. The other the other cells are uh, uh, working pretty well. Uh, that's why I have uh, almost 15.5 volt across the battery, uh, but still. Uh, this one it's causing the problem so I'm gonna leave it for a, a little bit longer and um, and see if if uh, this cell will 
will start uh, cooperating. Anyway, uh, it's just a, it's just an update, and uh, like I said, the, the the circuit is working. It's working pretty good, um, and that's the that's the switch where I can change. So right now you can tell the that's the input current it drop to 2.7 amp which is still uh, which is still good um, good charge for a battery such this one and uh, the small setting it's a normally it's a 1 1.2 1.3 amp and uh, this allows me to to deal with the with the smaller battery right now I just keep this on the on the higher on the higher setting uh, for this battery I want to see if I can if I can get this done I have a quite quite few batteries which which are sitting they fully restore they fully charged and I have a few more a few more batteries underneath which uh, they've been all they've been all done over anyway Thanks for watching.